Smith fracture is again an injury of distal part of the radius but this time fragments are displaced ventrally okay ventrally just opposite to Collis fracture okay because if you remember in Collis fracture I said that if fragments are displaced dorsally dorsally in Smith fracture fragments are displaced ventrally okay and that's why Smith fracture is called uh, sometimes reverse collis reverse collis again in collis fracture if fragments are displaced dorsally in the dorsum of the hand in a smith fracture if fragments are displaced ventrally ventrum of the hand okay the mechanism of a uh, smith fracture is also reversed from collis because instead of falling on dorsiflexed hand in collis this time the patient falls in the back falls on the back of his hand okay on the back in collis fracture the patient used to f to fall on the uh, on the pronation position of his hand in smith's fracture on the back of the hand and this explains everything because by logic when the patient falls on this part of his hand the force will come from here and will displace the fragments of the distal part of the radius ventrally okay ventrally but in collis fracture the patient will fall down on will fall down on the uh, pronation position of his arm of his hand and the force will come from here displacing the radius uh, the distal part of the radius dorsally okay dorsally by this we can understand the differences between smith and Curry's fractures okay instead of dinner fork appearance in Collis, in Smith we have what we call garden spade appearance or garden spade deformity as a result of anterior displacement anterior displacement of uh, sorry uh, not anterior displacement as a result of ventral displacement of fragments of the radius in this case okay by understanding the mechanism of injury one can expect the side of displacement and the deformity can appear okay let's just imagine again the patient fall down on his in his pronation position this will displace the fragments ventrally okay and will result in garden spade appearance this is the normal continuosity of the arm the hand should continue in this level but the what happens in smith is that the hand just depress depress okay let's just compare it with with collis fracture not smith with collis fracture in collis fracture this is the normal continuosity of the hand but the fracture obligate the hand to to make a prominent okay to make a prominence this is the difference in a smith what happens is that the hand continue just below the expected level in collis the hand continues just above the expected level so in in, uh, in collis fracture we have the fork appearance in uh, smith's fracture we have the garden spade appearance okay this is the difference on x-ray we can see fracture in the distal part of the radius okay of the radius you have to take lateral view why to see anterior or ventral displacement of a smith fracture to and to differentiate it of course from collis here we can see ventral this is the ventral part of the hand and 
and this is ventral displacement ventral displacement of the distal part of the radius okay ventral displacement again this is the dorsal part of the hand this is the ventral part of the hand we have ventral displacement as a result of falling down on here okay this is about x-ray about treatment a treatment is by uh, in non displaced of course a fractures is uh, by uh, is just like a cause fracture by putting a slip okay for a time then uh, observation a treatment in displaced fracture is by reduction close reduction this time reduction is done by traction extension and supination in the previous time or in college fracture reduction is done by traction flexion and pronation here extension in smith extension and supination extension and supination just the opposite after reduction we have to put a cast for six weeks then uh, yeah the treatment is by putting a cast for six week, weeks but we have to uh, reassist the fracture after seven to ten days of putting cast okay we have to do another x-ray if there is a slipping then we should uh, fixate the fracture with external fixation external this is external fixation of the radius okay why because reduction was done by traction extension and supination then after seven to ten days the patient was reassisted and uh, there was a slipping in the fracture then external uh, fixation was treatment of choice here i just compare between collis and smith fractures in the mechanism in Kulis fracture the patient fall down on his pronated hand in Smith's fracture the patient fall down in the back of his hand as a result the displacement is dorsal in Kulis fracture because the force comes from here and here is the displacement in Smith's fracture the displacement is ventral yes it is ventral the signs in Kulis fracture the sign is dinner fork because there is a dorsal deviation and guard in Smith fracture the appearance is garden spade okay the mechanism of traction is flexion and pronation in Kulis extension and supination in Smith okay flexion and pronation in Kulis extension and supination in Smith see you in the next video